gosh, long time no see. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my crib 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 crib. Seriously, for real though, it's been a minute. I have been very busy in college, dying over finals, but I finally have time to film. Woo! It's currently winter break, so that's nice. What, what's that? You like this? You like this dress? What? Oh, oh, oh! Thank you, thank you. It's made by Littlest Shop Littlest Crochet on Instagram. Please go check out that account. It is just like. Welcome back if you're new and old. My name is Hello Studios. I'm a longtime LPS customizer who has been customizing since 2017. I have made a plethora, 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 plethora of LPS customs over the years. I've lost count. It's kind of like my dinky little hobby and I love doing it. Today is another video continuing the Ugly to Cute LPS series. Ugly LPS in reference to the third generation of Littlest Pet Shop. If you haven't heard of the third generation, it is the shunned generation of the LPS fandom. Everyone hates them because they look very bad. <laughs> Very wonderful vocabulary today, but that just basically sums it up. They're terrible. Big beady eyelashes, terrifying expressions. It's the kind of LPS you wouldn't want in your room if Toy Story was real because they'd probably murder you in your sleep. Okay. Okay, I just realized I have like 20 of these generation in my drawer right now and now I'm kind of scared. <laughs> Through this series, we try to breathe life back into this generation by taking these bases, which are never ever used for customs, and seeing what we can make with them. Even though the LPS themselves look weird, um, a lot of the shapes and positions of the LPS are very unique and it makes for an interesting challenge when customizing. It's also extremely satisfying to take a less than ideal version of an LPS and see if I can make it look cute. Or better? The goal is better, okay? <laughs> so on today's agenda, I have a very special subject. But first... I would like to introduce to you a new little segment I'm going to be doing at the beginning of my videos when it's applica applicable. applicable. <laughs> it's going to be very short, like a one minute section I'm just going to dedicate to fan mail features. My P.O. box is in my channel about page. I put it there so that if I ever decide to close the P.O. box, nobody sends mail to some random person. Side note, I just wanted to mention that if you do send me fan mail, it's not guaranteed to make it on a video, but I still very much appreciate anything you want to send me. It's so cute. So we're gonna open this really quick. It's been in my room for about two months. <laughs> Not even kidding. It's just kind of been sitting here while I've been... I needed a chance to film and I'm finally on break so I can. So this package is from Ani. The box is so cute. Please film the Beast, Beth, Vincent, the Witch, Vi and Optic, and this very cute My Little Pony OC. Front side does have our addresses, but it has more cute art on it. Let's see what Ani sent. Me. Ooh, hello studios. And then a face. <laughs> it's Christmas time. It really actually is Christmas time. Happy holidays, everyone. Has this very cute card. Ani is in fourth grade. Happy fourth grade, 10 years old. My goodness. Little fan art. There's a name here I can't show, so I'm covering it. Oh my goodness. We have a bag of miscellaneous accessories for Beth. It looks like some necklaces, some jewelry. Oh, these little books are so cute. Those are gonna be so helpful for filming. And then this is like a large spell book. It looks like it's for Joseph. For the people unaware, this is just references to my series characters because I make LPS film. This one looks like it's for the beast and I see some earmuffs, some little props for extraordinary magic. I see a Monopoly game. That would be, that would be fun to play around with. Some jazzy glasses and some moon dust fan art. An absolutely adorable sticker. It's like Halloween themed. Cute. This was sent around Halloween. Koala eraser. That is so cute. This is my favorite thing ever. It's a turtle, but it's like a, a sticky notepad. I use these all the time. Looks like a little crown and some jewelry for Vi. Little plastic accessories. Oh, lemonade, come back. Ah! This lemonade is Beth Cottage vibes. Lion King stickers. I love this movie. Ooh, a little custom, oh my word. You send me your art, that's so special. Wow, these are really nicely wrapped. Oh, oh no, you did. Look at this cute little clay figurine you made. Ani says it's a little ferret. I love ferrets. This is so, so sweet. Oh my goodness. Oh. 
goodness. Ani says this is based off my water element custom. This one's name is Aqua. I love the position of the wings. That's so creative that it's holding a little magic wand. Vi is a dachshund, dachshund. This looks like a purple optic. Aw, Beth and the Beast. Joseph and Vincent interacting with some characters. Another Joseph. Oh, I love Joseph. This is so cute. I'm gonna hang this up in my bathroom, I'm not even joking. Oh, optic. It's optic. <laughs> Miss Beth. Vincent. And finally, the Beast. Ani's favorite. More extraordinary magic fan art in LPS Soulbound. Oh. This is so cute, I could cry. So this, she says this is drawn by her little brother, he's five, and his name is Cole, and it's the beast. This is so cute. Ani, super thank you so much for all of this beautiful stuff you sent me. It's so special to me, and I'm gonna hang it up in my room everywhere. I'm just gonna look at it all the time, every day. You're such a talented artist. I appreciate you so much, and thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate all this stuff so, so, so much. I'm gonna put these stickers on my desk right now. And I see, I'll see them every day and think of you, Ani. I put Ani's art in the background and her little sculptures to kind of commemorate how beautiful of an artist you are, Ani. Also, I put your little brothers as well. This koala reminds me of Mrs. Splashy, so of course, we're gonna keep that there as a dedication to her. Back from the dead back from the depths, but today is not about Mrs. Splashy, everyone. Today is about Krabitha. Please come forward, Krabitha. <laughs> Look at this thing! <laughs> oh, I have my work cut out for me today, guys. I do, I do, I do. So I selected this beautiful base to torture myself with today. I asked for you guys to name her again on my store. We had some very wonderful suggestions. Here's a few honorable mentions. Miss Penny Pincher, Grabby Crabby, Miss Pinchy Pinch, Priscilla Pinchy Claws, McCrazy Crab. A few people did suggest Crabitha. I'm going to be mentioning Dolly Lolly for being the first one to suggest Crabitha. It is just such a beautiful name. It's perfect for her. It's perfect for her insane smile. So, uh, <laughs> why do I do this to myself? <laughs> Like, why Why did I pick this one? Okay, well, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, what are we working with here? We have a candy-themed crab, everyone. Yeah, she's got some alien-looking legs coming out of her butt. Her smile is terrifying. Um, her eyes are cross-eyed, love it. She's like staring into the distance at something. She's got that death stare of like a crazy ex. All in all, the color scheme is not terrible. I think it's just the eyes that ruin this for me. Along with the anatomically incorrect composition of the body, if I'm just being honest here. This is not what a crab looks like! Is missing so many crab body parts, I don't even know what to say. Okay, you know, I have a comparison here. I have a comparison. So this is the generation three, and I have generation two, I believe. They are hermit crabs though, so they're a little bit different. I also have this big chunky one. All in all, the crabs are just kind of captured very weird on LPS. I don't know if I like these hermit crab ones, but at least they look a little bit better than whatever this is. <laughs> so um, I have these here for possible inspiration. Maybe I can cut some pieces off. Um, wait, sorry, cover your ears. Where are your ears? Do crabs have ears? Cut some pieces off from you, maybe. Okay, you didn't hear anything. Safe to say I have my work cut out for me today with Crabitha, trying to fix her. <laughs> Can it even be done? I don't know, okay. Despite Krabitha's portrayal here, terrible portrayal, crabs are very beautiful to me. They're, they're such uniquely shaped crustaceans. They've got such beautiful colorings. So I'm taking a few photos here for inspiration. First off, this one for anatomy purposes. And then kind of for just general appearance, I found this photo, it's of a hermit crab. I think it's probably some sort of sculpture or decoration. But look at those little black eyes, it's so cute. It looks so derpy and like happy. I also found a more crab-shaped version of this. It's a pen holder I found on Amazon. Along with just general crab photos, so I could get maybe some coloring inspiration or position inspiration. And that's all we gotta work with, guys. <laughs> Along with this terrible base. All right, this is something I never thought I'd search, but anatomy of a crap <laughs> because whatever is going on in this face needs to be changed dramatically. I'm gonna be using probably this photo just to break down the general shape of what Krabatha happens to be missing. I honestly think anything will be an improvement because 
what is going on with Krabatha. <laughs> Krabatha, you need like a serious makeover, girly, girly pop. Okay, I guess we just have to start sculpting. I don't know. My word, what do I even do? Everything is bothering me about this custom. <laughs> See what we can do with you, Krabatha. The face structure reminds me of a puzzle piece. Every little plate, or like plated armor almost, but every little piece kind of works together to slot in, kind of like a puzzle. Here, it's Krabatha. <laughs> oh my word, that's so ominous. <laughs> it should be the thumbnail. <laughs> Y'all, what? Well, the first things first is these gotta go immediately. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Don't overthink it, just start cutting off everything. That's probably gonna be my uh, initial. <laughs> One, two, okay, well, that was, that's, what the world? Oh, this looks like an LPS tick. <laughs> what have I made? What have I done? It literally is a tick. This is, this is a tick. This is a tick. Ticks are like my, most hated animal on this planet, basically. Okay, so I'm thinking these could be moved in a more natural position. I would love to re-sculpt all the legs, but since there's so many of them, I think I will just be sculpting off of what already exists here, just trying to make it a little bit more realistic looking. Yeah, they belong right here. This is where they should go. I suppose I can compromise and put them here. I think for the interpretation on this LPS form, it will probably look cuter like this. Let's do the legs first because if I'm going to be putting a big object here, I want to sculpt these first. My basic goal with the legs is just to make them look a little bit more realistic and plated. I'll be happy if this custom just looks slightly adorable at the end. Even though this base is absolutely atrocious, I'm actually kind of excited to see what I can do with it. Honestly, seeing a realistic little crab character as an LPS would look so cute. Especially with the inspiration photos. Like, I feel like I might be able to capture that essence, but I don't want to jinx myself, so I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> they have these sort of spiky frills at the end of their legs, I'm guessing for grip. So I'm gonna try to incorporate that just a little bit. So this character has six legs. However, crabs have eight plus their pinchers. I suppose I could try to add another leg, perhaps? I mean, maybe there's not room. I hate how this looks like a tick. It's really making me mad. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not gonna overthink this. Get some texture. Ooh, ooh, something to grab onto. Despite the circumstances of what I'm working on, it's so nice to sit down and just paint and like create stuff again. I really had my head in the game for college. Like I really want to do well in college. So I kept delaying this video because I couldn't mentally focus on both academic success and I guess fulfillment and hobbies. But I did really well in my finals and I'm so happy like academically this year I did so well. I was beyond floored. These videos are kind of just mental health for me though. Like they help me so much. On the MBTI personality scale, I'm the type of personality that finds a lot of satisfaction in like fixing things. The act of restoration or just leaving the world better, better than you found it, adding beauty to the world, um, is just makes me like feel fulfilled. It's the same way if you, if you enjoy cleaning or something, cleaning a space or helping, helping people that way. It just helps me feel like I have a, uh, like I'm benefiting, like, like my skills are benefiting the people around me. Anyway, yeah. And they're in this in this version, they're benefiting Mrs. Krabatha. <laughs> You're welcome, Krabatha. I'm really putting my all into you today, Krabatha. This clay is just sticking to my hands. But on the topic of college, again, I was so happy with how I did with finals. Sorry if you hear buzzing, someone's texting me. I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but in high school, or actually pretty much all school throughout my entire life, I didn't take school seriously at all. I didn't really care about school. I actually kind of resented school in a way. I felt like I was just being forced to go and I didn't like it. Even though I honestly didn't mind my school, like I had a good experience at school. And when I was there, I there were people I enjoyed being around and teachers I enjoyed. And I, I genuinely crave learning, like I love 
to learn things. That's something I only realized when I was out of school, is how much I missed that. Like, I just, I missed going to school and learning things and hearing voices, different people's voices and perceptions on topics and being presented with all sorts of knowledge on everything you could think of. I actually find myself, I found myself going to the library and checking out books like history books or just all sorts of topics just because I was kind of craving like I miss that challenge of school. I didn't really realize I enjoyed it invertently even though I was rebellious against the system and pretending that I was trapped. I, I secretly liked it. I didn't realize that about myself. We're getting, I'm getting really into this and not sculpting. <laughs> when I start like talking it's hard to multitask. The whole point is now, I kind of made a perception change and a mental goal to actually try in school for the first time in my entire life. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't get bad grades in high school or anything. Like, I got, I got good grades. I got decent grades, but it wasn't like, it just wasn't my, my all, you know? Like, I didn't put effort in. I can't remember studying outside of school ever in high school. <laughs> I never did. Even in AP classes, like, I would study the classroom beforehand for tests. It was kind of chaotic, and I don't know how I managed to, to do that, but I just, I didn't, I didn't value school like I do now, I guess. And now that I'm trying in school, I feel, like, so fulfilled because I had a teacher for my writing class. I don't know, at the end of my final papers, did so incredibly well, I, I have no idea how they did that well, and a final paper in a writing college class is like your final test, basically. We were working on it for over two months, <laughs> so it was a huge paper, it was a huge research paper. I did mine on the unusual aspect of claymation film, like how it brings such weird topics to the table of children's media, specifically. Like, think of Coraline, the PG rating on Coraline, and what is being presented. I was kind of just exploring that for my thesis. It was it was a very fun topic and my paper got a 98. <laughs> a 98. That was insane. I was squealing when I saw the final grade and she's like, "I loved your paper so much. I want to use it as a classroom example." And that is beyond flattering. And she wanted to use another one of my papers as a classroom example, which made me squeal. And she asked me to come to her next class for next semester, even though I'm already signed up. She wanted me in her class, which is uh, just like, you know, if you get teacher praise, I don't know if that, if most people can relate. I just, teacher praise to like, if you respect a teacher and getting praise from them, especially after working very hard, it's just, that's a really, really good feeling. And I, it doesn't happen very often. So I, I never pursued it before. So it's just, it was nice to, receive that. So I'm just gonna sculpt right on top of these claws. Anyway, I guess uh, my, what I've learned from this so far is if you're someone who does not like school, which is honestly, I was just like you, just try to find like the, the good in your situation. Humans enjoy learning, like it's actually something we all have in common. We crave knowledge and understanding. That's just what it is to be a person. So even though school can be very stressful and, and, and challenging, try to find the, the enjoyment in your situation if you can. I'm not going too bonkers crazy with this sculpting. I'm just trying to get it a little bit improved. It looks like crab claws have two separate sections. Um, so this is where the joint like conjoins right here in the hinge. Ooh, the lighting here is kind of weird. Sorry about that. The outside is just, you know, it's winter. It gets darker during the days. And it kind of creates like a moody atmosphere. It's super foggy out. It kind of reminds me of like misty mountains from Lord of the Rings. Those kind of vibes. I'm going to put this and let this cure for a second while I work on the other claw. I'll probably just do this one off camera. It's going to be the same deal. Just adding more like larger portions. Oh, it's so warm from the oven. Free hand warmer. <laughs> Guys, isn't this bracelet so cute? Someone made this for me. They sent it to me. Part of a custom trade. And it says Audie on it, which is my nickname. My name's Autumn, so people call me Ati. Ati. I wear it all the time. It makes me so happy. Just the colors. 
it winds around with greens, blues, and browns, which is just the colors of nature. It makes me so happy. Oh, it's like kind of really cold in my room. I live in the part of the house that doesn't really get very much heat. Okay, I'm gonna start on the face. Let's just get it over with, guys. <laughs> this stuff is not done by any means. I just, I can't keep looking at these eyes. They're scaring me. And this still looks like a tick and that's freaking me out. This is going to be interesting. I've never sculpted such a weirdly shaped thing before because the eyes have to jut out. Okay. This is reminding me of when I sculpted Baby Yoda or Grogu, whatever you say. And before it was sculpted, it looked like an alien. But after it's painted, it looks a lot better. So this is kind of one of those trust the process moments, I suppose. I don't know, guys, I'm trying here. <laughs> Probably larger eyes will look cuter. Anyway, it's Christmas time. So what are you guys' holiday traditions? I always found Christmas to be my favorite holiday. My family is not really one for celebrating like doing big celebrations on holidays, but Christmas time is a different story. My mom goes all out on the decorations. It looks like Santa's workshop downstairs. I'm not even joking. She is so talented at indoor, des indoor design, interior design. <clears throat> None of our traditions are with Santa specifically in Christmas, but I always thought how cute it was to have like parents who take flour or something, put them on boots and, and walk from the fireplace to the tree or just try to create that extra magic for their kids. Elf in the Shelf or the magic of Christmas. I never ever have gone to the mall before as a kid and sat on Santa's lap. That has never happened to me. <laughs> but I think it's so cute that people do that for their kids. I actually, I don't even remember when... I stopped believing in Santa Claus. I actually don't remember at all. You know in those Christmas movies when they're like, I stopped believing in Santa Claus at this hour, at this day, when I was seven years old and this happened. <laughs> I don't have that story. The magic of Christmas has left me. I'm a Grinch. I'm a Grinch. Okay, I, I hope these eye sockets work. I, I don't know. Oh, this looks bad. Oh, it was looking good and then I ruined it. Why'd I do that? <laughs> Because I'm a perfectionist. Oh, thank you for reminding me. For Christmas traditions though, in my family, my mom makes this delicious homemade caramel. It is so good. It's, it's, it's terribly addictive, which is too bad because it's terrible for you. I love giving gifts though. It's one of my love languages. Um, and I am like a really good gift giver. I got a really good idea for all the people I'm giving gifts this year. I'm excited. I have like a whole stash in my room. It's all hidden. It's gonna be a fun activity like the night before Christmas. I'm gonna, I'm going to wrap them all and then put them under our tree like Santa came because I'm the one who stays up the latest in my family. So I can just be Santa Claus. <laughs> Does anybody actually leave out like cookies and stuff as a tradition? Cause that would be so adorable to hear about. I'm kind of sad that we never got into, like my family never got into more whimsical aspects of Christmas like that. Like leaving carrots out and then parents chewing on chewing on the carrots or something for reindeer. We need more holidays in life, things to celebrate. And even if you have like a family that doesn't celebrate at all, you can, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Christmas. I know not everybody has, you know, ideal situations in that regard. But even if you are in a less than whimsical environment. I still wish you a good holiday all the same. Do you guys have favorite Christmas movies? I'd have to say mine is Home Alone. I just love the chaotic, <laughs> the chaotic atmosphere of it, the traps and stuff. Plus the actor for Kevin is just hilarious. I mean that's probably a consensus most people would agree with. Just a really funny movie. Home Alone. That was like my go-to movie when I was a kid for Christmas. I haven't seen it yet though, and it's almost Christmas. I gotta do that. I'll do that tonight, I promise. Okay, I got that part. Mm. <laughs> this looks so weird. I don't know, can you guys see the vision? Do you see the vision I'm attempting to do? Good gracious, alive. What have I done? At least her eyes are covered, right guys? Her eyes are covered, so there's that much to be thankful for. This might be the most sculpting I've ever done on one of these customs so far during this series. What can I say? Krabatha really, really needs it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave little indents where I want these 
pinchers to come out of. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> Something like that. We're just gonna do that, okay. I don't know, I'm in a really, really good mood. I feel like this custom is gonna turn out good. Like I can feel it in my bones. Even though it looks cursed right now, I just, I've got really high hopes for this all of a sudden. Maybe just because I haven't been making projects for a while, so now I have the opportunity to put my all into something. And I'm not gonna lie, this, oh, it's not even focusing, but yeah guys, I subscribe to Word of the Day. <laughs> Improve your vocabulary. Okay, um, just the structure of this is already getting me excited about how this will be painted. But that's a good tip I can give you is subscribing to Word of the Day on Dictionary or just on app or something. That helped me so much in my English class, it's insane. When I was going to write any paper, I would just pull up the app and just scroll through the words they have. Plus, I just kind of want to learn more vocabulary. As a writer, it's just like more tools in your inbox to create mayhem. <laughs> I don't know what it is with my brain though. I cannot spell things out loud for the life of me. Like, okay, Autumn, spell beautiful out loud. B-E-A-U-T, beauty. I don't know what it is. There's just something missing in my brain that can picture that. You give me a pen and paper, I can write it, no problem. But spelling it, no way. <laughs> I could never, ever do a spelling bee. I kind of felt this too when I was learning sign language and uh, finger spelling. It's the same kind of mental aspect of just spelling, understanding words based on their letters. I do not know what it is. I cannot comprehend. <laughs> it's just, it just messes my brain up. It might be something to do with like different learning styles, like auditory, visual hands-on. I learn the best when I talk out loud to myself, which is inconvenient, honestly, but <laughs> that's why I'm like, I really enjoy teaching. Like, when I have study groups with people, I'm usually the one teaching, and that's that helps me learn. Even if I don't know the material, I'll know it by the end if I'm the one speaking it. I guess this isn't cure for long enough. It's still pretty malleable. Yeah, I think teaching is just so fun. It's just... I love it. It might be why I like to make videos so much. It's just talking and showing people how I do stuff is just really fulfilling to me, rewarding, satisfying. Except for this sculpting job, what is going on? <laughs> oh my void. What am I to do? I still have a good feeling about this custom though. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's delusion. I really need to make sure this looks flat because I keep poking it and then creating sharp edges. We don't want sharp edges. We want flat plates of crustacean crustiness i want crustiness okay i'm ready to reattach the claws i'm gonna use a little bit of wire so i don't have to worry about it snapping off considering it's extending very far please do this in a ventilated area by the way because those smoky fumes are so bad for you we're gonna just use a drill bit like a normal person <laughs> It's just, this is so fragile, I don't know what else to do. I'm going to use glue as well. This is just kind of an extra security measure, I suppose. I actually have no idea what's going on with the inside of this LPS. It feels like there's two layers of plastic. Because I reached a layer, I reached a barrier, I went through it. And now it's hitting something. Yeah, good enough. There we go. I'm probably going to be covering most of this custom in super glue, but definitely this joint. Is it looking crabby yet? Is crabby looking? Is Krabitha looking crabby yet? <laughs> I hope it's an improvement because uh, it's glued on now. I can't move it. She kind of looks like she's ready to like for self defense, like she's in a position of harm. Don't mess with Krabitha, guys. <laughs> it kind of looks like his eyebrows now. That wasn't my intention, but it does kind of look like this has sort of spikiness right here, so I wanted to incorporate that. That's actually something I've never seen before. You know how, even I do, I put eyebrows on my customs sometimes for characters. 
Has anyone ever actually sculpted eyebrows on? I don't know if I've seen that before, but I love me some bushy eyebrows. I think that's such a fun character trait. When I draw people, I love to do like super bushy eyebrows. It would be something interesting to explore in a custom. I might not leave that there, but whatever. Let's add the eyes. No, wait, let's add the mouth first. Kind of has two pieces here. Um, I don't know how I feel about these hairy bits. Maybe, maybe that's a mistake. But that's just what it looks like on here. Something like that shape goes on here. <laughs> this is looking so chaotic. But you have to admit their their anatomy is just very interesting. It's kind of cool how creatures adapt to to their environments, all their features and stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting for it to cure, but in the meantime, I made a little post. I was like, guess what's coming next on my community tab? You guys are so funny. I'm scared. You should name her Miss Candyland. Now, nah, why is she like that? Ew, she looks like the Grinch's long lost sister. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, I hereby decree in honor of um, Sky and Abby, we're gonna have Mrs. Krabatha's lore be updated. She's from Mrs. She's from Candyland, so Miss Krabatha lives in Candyland, and uh, she's named Miss Krabatha. So the lore is expanding in our universe now. <laughs> She's currently being barbecued as the clay cures. I'm not gonna lie guys, just speaking straight facts here, but Miss Krabatha might have to turn into Mrs. Steel Your Man because look at those pecs, look at those abs, look at those biceps, man. <laughs> she looks like she's ready to like stand up square up. <laughs> we are very close to being done with the sculpting. The back needs a little bit more TLC, but I mean, who even looks at the back, right? Let's just cover it with a big plate. The back doesn't matter, that's the rule of artists. <laughs> I can't sculpt this. <laughs> Do I have to blur this because it's flesh colored? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I have to I have to take a picture of this. It's too good. This can be my next Instagram post, guys. I'm just gonna post this on my story with no context. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. For traumatizing your eyes. Okay, okay, okay. She can't have a butt. We don't want to get demonetized. But she would, wouldn't she? She'd have the best glutes. You know Miss Krabatha works those glutes. She's in the gym, the, the, the underwater gym every other day, doing the squats. Eh, something like that. Just about good. I don't actually have a reference picture for the back, that's why it just looks like this, but from what I can remember, it's just a big shell, right? Just kind of creating an interesting shape, I guess. Oh, it's so cold up here, but luckily there's some broth downstairs. Yummy! Nothing beats being cold and then having something really warm to drink. <sighs> okay. Honestly, she's looking... She's looking pretty good. Um, <laughs> but I'm not gonna say anything until the eyes are in. She's still missing, she's just got eye sockets right now, I just leave her like that. <laughs> I kind of miss her butt though. Oh, it would have been so easy to add it too. Okay, well, <laughs> that would be a little bit unhinged. Maybe I could start a new series. Can I make this cute LPS cursed? <laughs> Again, I want this dinky sort of look to look cutesy poopsy. All right, we're gonna put the eyeballs in. They're kind of an oval shape. Something like that. Might need to be bigger than that. Let's do some big old eyes. Beth looks so cute in this outfit. Are you kidding me? I can't stop looking at her. She's so sweet looking. <laughs> oh, I used to live up north and we got negative 30 degree weather Fahrenheit. I don't know if that is in Celsius because I'm a dumb American, <clears throat> but it's basically AKA very, very cold. Now, what is it outside? Like maybe 40 degrees and I'm sitting here freezing my butt off. What is with that? Uh, a little bit smaller, maybe. I don't know. Does that look good? Let me look at this again. Maybe they need to be rounder. Maybe this is the part where I can be a little bit creative and just make them for cute points instead of <laughs> realistic points. I think the bottom should be a little bit narrower. 
Anyone who's a customizer knows the eyes can make or break a custom. And this is some pretty wacky looking eyeballs, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, okay, um... <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my word. Well, this needs a lot of glue and then needs to be baked again. And then I think I'll be ready to paint. I'm gonna be taking inspiration. Oh, I'm gonna be taking some inspiration from this photograph for coloring and such. I kind of just like the vibes of the adorable aspect of that hermit crab sculpture. So we're gonna start with white as a base coat. You know how I said I was confident this was gonna look nice? Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm kind of backpedaling here a bit. Maybe I was a little bit too prematurely excited. At the very least, this is gonna be very satisfying to see painted. This doesn't even look like an LPS anymore. Here's the full, full sculpting job. All done, all cured. Okay, I am kind of missing the butt. Sad times, okay. Kakitha, she was good while she lasted. I might break out my airbrush for this custom, I'm not sure though. Again, I own an airbrush, but I never use it. I have to like force myself to use it because it's such a pain to, well, it's not even that much. It's not even that hard to get it up and like plug it in and stuff, but actually she's not looking too bad. I, sh I don't know. I'm just going to see what I think when she's painted. No comment right now. I just love making things so much. I'm so glad I have time to do this. Okay, that's the first base coat. Oh, I didn't really do a very good job on the bottom part, but now that I'm looking at this, yeah, I'll probably break out the airbrush for the top warmth part. So I'm going to be painting the bottom of kind of cream color, and then I'll do a rustic orange on the top and airbrush it so it kind of transitions very nicely. Okay, so I got the cream color for her base. <laughs> uh, that's kind of darker than I was thinking. Maybe, eh, whatever. You can always cover it again. Something like, I do want a dark color to kind of fit in those crevices because if you're going to have such texture, it's good to accentuate it. And this custom has kind of a comforting weight since so much clay is on it. So when you hold it, it actually kind of feels real, if that makes sense. I really did try with her sculpting. I promise you, I tried. <laughs> I can't tell if it looks good though. It's like an artist to always be criti critical of their own work because you made it, so. You always feel like you can do better. I feel like that's something everyone can relate to in some capacity. Even if you're not an artist, just in general. Curse of the human condition. Oh, I was gonna go grab my airbrush paint and my pearl powder exploded in here. This stuff is like finer than dust. Um, that's so chaotic. Okay, well, <laughs> we're just gonna grab this and close the drawer. That's, that's the solution. <laughs> Okay, so I kind of mixed a more pumpkin-y color, but I think it'll still look pretty cute. We can always do multiple layers if I don't like the color. Um, more airbrush practice. I've got a piece of paper laid down so my desk doesn't get demolished more than it already is. Everywhere the sun would hit is where I'm trying to airbrush this on. Let's start on the back because no one cares about the back. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that's a nice color. Here we go. That's so satisfying. Why is that so fun? Let me get into the... I'm gonna cover these over here so I don't have to worry about paint getting on Beth. That would be horrible. This looks so cute. I'm so happy we're doing airbrush. Look at how cute. This is like the perfect color too. Ooh, I'm gonna get it all over my hands. I say this like I don't already have paint all over my hands. I love airbrushing. Every time I do it, I enjoy it. I don't know why I don't do it more. It's not even that much of a pain to clean, honestly. Like, it's worth it. Okay, whatever. Oh, I think the color's changing slightly. Because I mix it in this little container on top of the airbrush, so sometimes the colors don't get mixed completely. It's starting to look more red. Whoa, that's such a cool effect. You can see like the plates kind of look realistic now. Go a little bit crazy on the top here. <clears throat> I 
that's pretty good, honestly. Like, I'm, wow, that was really easy and fun. Oh, I hope this turns out. Okay, here we go. No pressure. I shared that Krabatha butt photo <laughs> with the butt and somebody DM'd me crab cakes. <laughs> uh. Okay, wait. I think it might look cute, guys. Did we do it? I honestly, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a crab custom. I don't even know if I've ever seen a crab custom. Has anyone ever made one? We're having crab dinner tonight. <laughs> Krabatha is like traumatized being in my house. Don't worry, Krabatha. I'll take good care of you. I can't tell if she looks good. It's like when you hear a word over and over again, it starts sounding weird. That's what this is doing to me. I literally sat down this morning, started making her, and I haven't stopped since. So I have had no time to look over my work and and from fresh eyes. Okay, we're gonna do the tips. A little dark color for a little a a a extra oomph. Seriously, I'm painting so far away from me. I'm gonna have to lean in here. I'm being exceptionally careful because it's nerve-wracking painting with black paint. Okay. <laughs> it's not like one mistake could just ruin this entire effect or anything. Has anyone seen The Boy and the Heron? The new Ghibli masterpiece that's in theaters? I haven't seen it yet. Which is surprising because I'm such a big Ghibli fan. I heard it's like amazing. I was watching um, Whisper of the Heart again the other day. Such a good Ghibli film. I think it's probably my favorite, honestly. I don't know what it is about it, it's just so comforting. It's kind of a slice of life with a creator's struggles mixed in with it because the main character is this young girl who's wanting to be an author, but she doesn't think her writing is good. Relatable. <laughs> writing can be so tricky because you, you basically always need a second eye to evaluate your work. And it can be kind of hard to take criticism on something that's that personal to you. Like writing is just so personal. It's kind of like a reflection of your soul. <laughs> your imagination taking form, it's, it's a really difficult medium to create. But I always try to be open to constru bleh, constructive criticism in my writing because it's the only way you can grow. I think it would be really amazing to write a book. It just seems so intimidating to me, like out of the bounds of possible reality or achievable reality. You don't want to write a book until you feel, feel like you're perfect at writing and I don't think I'll ever feel like I'm perfect at writing, so what does that say about ever writing a book, you know? But. I've been developing a potential new series on YouTube, like a series project. Well, it's been in development for a while, but I recently kind of established some of the events. Do you guys have a writing process you go through? A lot of my stories start from me listening to soundtrack and imagining kind of like the rising action or climax of a story based off the soundtrack for some reason. Like I just picture some sort of event happening and Usually it's so vivid that I can build the rest of the story around that peak in the story. I feel like that helps me write because it gives me a reason to make the story in the first place. And when you have a good ending already figured out, it's it's simpler to just fill in the pieces, you know? Or if you just have like the main events. Writing is so much fun. Honestly, I just need more writing friends. <laughs> it's so much fun just writing in groups. I sound like such a nerd. <laughs> I just, I love storytelling. It's just... I think it's just my passion in life. I, I've always felt, I don't know, even giddy enthusiasm in the face of creation like that. I don't think that's ever going to change. That's always been what I loved and what I aspire to do. Krabatha, you like the deep talks? Like the deep talks about writing? What would Krabatha's story be? She lives in Candyland. Her name is Krabatha. She's got that crab cake. She goes to the gym. We need a full lore and backstory. If there is a writer watching this, I see you. You have now give, been given the task <laughs> to write an essay about Miss Krabatha's life, story, trauma, background, and future goals. Aspirations and character. Give her a character arc. Best one gets pinned. Soundtracks are so powerful. They're definitely like the number one thing that inspires me to create 
or even if I just feel a certain mood and I turn on a soundtrack, Spirit soundtrack, if you guys have seen the movie Spirit, the animated movie. Oh my goodness. That is such writing f f fuel to me. Or sometimes I'll just be listening to a soundtrack, like I was just, oh, my potatoes are ready. Okay, well I gotta go get those. <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh my gosh. I swear these potatoes are to die for. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna link the recipe down below. I'm gonna butcher this because it's in a different language, but it's called red potato provincal. Provincal? It's like potatoes and, <gasps> wow, how did that get on there? Sorry, there's like a black smudge on Miss Grabitha. No, whatever. Anyway, it's such a good recipe. 10 out of 10 recommend to try it. But as I was saying, sometimes I'll be listening to a soundtrack, like the theory of everything, and it'll, the soundtrack will be so good, like the instrumentals, that I'll go and watch the movie. Cause I just get random soundtrack recommended to me or in playlists and stuff when I click on a soundtrack I've ever, or bleh, already heard before. The movie Le Chocolate, Chocolate, Le Chocolate or something like that. That soundtrack, oh my golly goodness, it is so beautiful. I've never seen the movie, but the soundtrack is bomb. Which probably means the movie's really good too. So it's getting me into good cinema. Which is another thing that I really need to do, is watch more live action cinema. Because that's where all the good cinema is, and I feel like I just haven't explored the majority of it. I knew I didn't know very much cinema when I watched this interview with like these famous actresses and actors. The interviewer asked, so give your top three favorite movies. And every single movie they mentioned, I didn't know any of them. I just, there's so much I haven't seen before, but it's so rare for me to just sit down and watch a movie. Movies are usually like a background thing for me, like, oh, I'll turn on a movie while I paint, or oh, I'll turn on a, uh, I'll turn on a movie while I go to sleep, or just stuff like that. Just, I never really sit down and be like, I'm gonna watch this movie. But I know there's so much cinema that's so good. If you have any film suggestions of like, must-see films as a human being. Please tell me. I would love to know. Just like set aside even like an hour a week and just say I'll watch one movie a week. It's kind of like reading. If you're an author and you want to become a better author and you want to write stories, you have to read stories. As a person who likes to make film, if I want to make better film, I have to consume film to make film. And I do consume film, but I'm just I'm enamored with animation, so that's what I primarily am appealed to, is just animated film. I always know what's going on with the animated film world. I have no idea about the live action. That's not saying I never have seen any live action movies. There's plenty of live action movies I love, but I'm always open to watching more. The live action film I have seen that's really stuck with me, like Dead Poets Society or something, I watched, I was like forced to watch it for school. But I know it's a good movie because I remember it. Like, it was, it's, it was that good. It just made an impact on me. And I know there's so many films like that, and I just need to make an effort to reach out and watch them. Okay, so I'm almost done with Krabitha. I think I just want to do a little bit of a wash to try and bring back some of the creases and crevices since we kind of lost that during the airbrushing process. Also, it'll just add another layer of color. So how I do this is I mix a lot of water with a little bit of paint. It's probably made brown. And then I'll I'll um, dab off the excess on the custom. This is one of those techniques that can get out of hand if you go too ham. Start on her back end. <laughs> Cause I'm scared, okay. So we have this brown color. I think that's enough water. Um, YOLO, right? Let's go to town. Kind of just adds a realistic weathered effect as well, which I really like on these sort of realistic customs. But mainly for the creases. She looks like she was in like muddy bog water. That's so cute. Yeah, that brings out the texture, especially on this, on this claw. Something like that. <clears throat> a little bit more on her back end. Mm, pretty good. Another small thing that makes a huge difference. Okay, I wanna bring a little bit of lighter color back in around its face. I'm wondering, should we do anything else with her eyes? 
I'm gonna gloss them, of course, but from what I could see on the photos, it didn't really look like there was any color. I mean, I could maybe do a little bit of brown. Oh, harmless addition. Could add a little white dot in her eye. Okay, I think she just needs sealed and her eyes need glossed and she's done? What? Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay, y'all. Crabatha's done. <laughs> she's complete. The queen is finished. After an entire day of me making this crab, I sincerely hope that you appreciate um, how she turned out. So let's take a look-see poopsie, okay. Here's our lady, Miss Krabatha. Um, yeah. Wow. So it's safe to say that she has had an insane transformation. She looks completely different than when how she started. This is probably one of the most realistic customs I've made in a long time. Honestly, and it was a very fun challenge. So what do you think, Miss Krabatha, everyone? She has been transformed. I think she actually looks pretty cute. She's really fun to hold. She's got this weight to her because she's just so much clay was used. So it feels like a real animal, almost. I personally find crabs to be very cute, and I feel like I'm kind of getting that same sensation. It still reminds me a lot of a real crab, but with a clever animated spin to it, cartoonistic style. Honestly, this might have been my favorite one so far from this challenge, just because it was a, like a, a complete makeover, complete transformation. Even if she's not perfect, um, I really do like uh, everything that I did to upgrade her, hopefully. Hopefully it's an upgrade, what do you guys think? I mean, <laughs> to say it's an upgrade is not that hard considering what it looked like before. <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie, she's kinda cute. Like, like I might have to put her by my shrimp tank. Have her chill out with my shrimpies, cause she's kinda cute. She doesn't really strike me as an LPS, and that's the only thing that's kind of bothering me, is the fact that, I'm, well, I don't know. I don't know how you would translate a crab to an LPS form in a way that still reminds you of an LPS, so I suppose. That is to say, I really do like this custom and I'm pretty happy with it. It did look cursed, it looked cursed before, but now that it's painted and finished, I'm like, yeah, she's kind of, she's kind of a queen. All in all, I found this a very fun use of my day. I have just been wanting to paint so badly and this was just so refreshing thank you so much for coming along with me i hope you like the transformation leave your thoughts down below and i'll see you in the next video hugs 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 thanks for crafting with me any last words crabatha i will have justice for my missing crab cakes <laughs> it's okay i'll make another one one day with crab cakes you're welcome that can be a future video <laughs> No, I'm not doing that. P.S. Follow me on Instagram at Hello Studios. Bye, 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 bye.